The story of Simo Heha, the White Death. Discover the incredible story of Simo Heha, known as the deadliest sniper in history. This video delves into the life of the legendary Finnish marksman, highlighting his unmatched skills as a Franco tirador, making him the most lethal sharpshooter of all time. Learn about his tactics, achievements, and the impact he had during his time as a sniper. If you're fascinated by military history and extraordinary individuals, this is a must-watch. When talking about the most lethal snipers in history, several names come to mind, such as Francis Pegamegabo, Vasily Zaitsev, Lyudmila Pavlichenko, Wally, among others. However, there is one man who stands out above the rest and, in my opinion, is the best and most lethal sniper in history. Simo Heha, also known as, the White Death. Heha was a Finnish soldier who defended his country during the Soviet invasion of 1939, in the conflict known as the Winter War. During this war, which lasted just over three months, his actions were so remarkable and deadly that he not only became a hero of Finland but also instilled such fear in Soviet troops that they sent entire units of snipers and artillery just to stop him. Simo went down in history for his prodigious marksmanship, high discipline, enormous patience, and intelligence. He used a particular and effective technique to hide in the forests, moving like a ghost among enemy lines and eliminating any Soviet soldier who crossed his sights. All these elements, along with a large number of enemy casualties, have etched Simo Heha's name in military history. Simo Heha was born on December 17, 1905, in Rautjärvi, a village in Finland, as the seventh of eight children of a Lutheran farming family. He grew up surrounded by nature, getting used to working on the farm from a young age, skiing on the icy plains, and especially hunting in the forest, demonstrating a prodigious shooting ability from an early age. At the age of 19, he attended compulsory military service and shortly after joined a volunteer militia called Suo Jaluskunta, which can be translated as White Guard. During these years, his marksmanship and skills improved significantly, and Heha won numerous titles in shooting competitions within this unit. Despite his undeniable talent, Simo Heha was a solitary and humble man. His upbringing on a farm made him somewhat antisocial, and his short stature of 1.60 meters did not help much either. He was not a man who enjoyed being the center of attention. In all the photos of his childhood and youth, he is seen in the background or on the side, avoiding drawing attention. However, in 1939, he was forced to leave that anonymity and step into the spotlight. Three months after the outbreak of World War II, Joseph Stalin decided to invade Finland. The conflict between these two countries arose because the Soviet leader had asked the Finnish government to cede a portion of territory near the border, supposedly to better protect Leningrad against the threat of the Third Reich. Finland's refusal led Stalin to decide to invade, apparently with the intention of conquering the entire neighboring country and installing a puppet communist government, although this is just a theory. As a result of the advance of the Red Army, Simo Heha and all members of the White Guard were called to fight. The sniper fell under the orders of Lieutenant Arne Judelinen in the 6th Company of the 34th Infantry Regiment. The Finnish army moved quickly to stop the invasion. The size, resources, weaponry, and forces difference between the countries was enormous, making it seem like an easy victory for the Soviets. Stalin predicted that he would take all of Finland in just a couple of weeks, but the reality was very different. In the preceding years, Stalin had carried out a massive purge in the army, weakening it by eliminating many generals and commanders. As a result, Soviet military intelligence and tactics were basically non-existent at that time. Moreover, the Soviet Union attacked Finland in the middle of winter, with temperatures of 20, 30, 40, and even 50 degrees below zero. They did so without snowshoes and without white camouflage, wearing light brown and green, and sent tanks and vehicles over frozen lakes without testing the ice's resistance, resulting in disasters for Soviet tank crews. Stalin sent an army made up of recent conscripts, farmers, and young people commanded by inexperienced leaders into battle. The Soviet Union invaded a much smaller and weaker country, but after weeks of fighting, they had only advanced a few kilometers. This was partly due to the lack of experience of the Soviet generals, but also to the highly intelligent and brave Finnish resistance. Despite the overwhelming numerical, technological, and weaponry differences, the Finns managed to halt the invasion thanks to their guerrilla tactics. Hiding in the forest and launching ambushes, 
using homemade incendiary bombs known as Molotov cocktails against Soviet tanks. At the center of this effective and brave Finnish resistance was Simo Heha. Initially, he was just another soldier, but his incredible performances quickly made him a name among the soldiers and later among the entire Finnish people. Despite his short stature, shy smile, and humility, Heha was absolutely lethal. During the first 22 days of combat, he eliminated 138 Soviet soldiers, and in the following months, his numbers only increased. Heha was the ideal sniper, cold, intelligent, patient, and with brutal marksmanship. He can hit a target 150 meters away 16 times in just one minute. He knew the area perfectly and had advanced survival and hunting knowledge. Although some more modern weapons were available, he used his civil guard rifle, a Finnish variant of the Soviet Mosin Nagant, which he knew well and considered reliable. Before and after each mission, he spent a long time cleaning and maintaining his rifle to prevent it from jamming in the cold. His combat strategies were equally interesting. He moved between enemy lines at night, found a good location, and sat there during the few daylight hours of the Finnish winter. Camouflaged with several layers of white clothing, he dug a small pit to hide in and made a small mound of snow in front to avoid being easily seen. Finnish Landscape and Camouflage Techniques of Simo Heha In the Finnish landscape, Heha buried and concealed himself even further. There, hidden with his small stature, he was almost undetectable, even at close range. Once positioned, Simo waited patiently until he had an enemy in his sights. He took great care to ensure that nothing gave away his position. In his small hideout, he used frost to prevent the vibration of the shots from dispersing the fine snow powder, revealing his location. He also put his gloves under the rifle and on the snow to reduce the gun's kickback and packed his arms with snow to make the shot even more precise. He even put snow in his mouth to cool his breath and prevent the vapor from his respiration from being seen by the enemy against the white battlefield. Shooting Strategy and Precision When attacking, Heha aimed not at the head but at the torso, the area known as the center of mass, as it is a larger target and a more reliable shot. According to Heha, a small error when aiming at the enemy's head could reveal his position and even cost him his life. Beyond all this, the most remarkable aspect of Heha's combat style was that he did not use the rifle's telescopic sight but the iron sight. This decision was due to two factors. He did not trust the telescopic sight because the monocle could break in the cold, and the sun could reflect on the lens, revealing his position to the enemy. In any case, it was clear that Heha did not need it. Patience and Meticulousness Heha knew that marksmanship is important, but patience is at least equally important. He would spend hours and hours in his hideout, barely moving. He often carried sugar cubes and pieces of bread in his pockets to endure the cold. When he wanted to eat something, his movements were so slow and careful that it could take him up to half an hour to bring a sugar cube to his mouth. Legend and Recognition His feats and staggering number of kills quickly made Simo Heihei a hero in Finland, earning him the nickname, The White Death. Although it was said that the Soviets gave him this nickname, it was actually a product of Finnish propaganda to boost the morale of the people through a hero of almost mythological proportions. He also received the nickname, The Magic Shooter. Soviet Reaction Although the famous nickname was not given by the Soviets, this does not mean they did not fear him. Soviet propaganda did everything to hide Heha, and even the high command sent entire units of snipers to eliminate him. When these failed, they sent artillery, but they were not much more successful. During the nearly 100 days of the Winter War, the participation of Heha and other snipers was incredibly decisive, forcing the Soviets to change their combat tactics. Encounters and Survival Throughout the war, Heha came face to face with death more than once, whether in duels with other snipers or enemy artillery attacks. Luck was on his side for most of the war, but on March 6, 1940, he was hit by an explosive bullet in his cheek. Severely wounded, his comrades thought him dead, but he was rushed to a hospital and treated. Incredibly, Hay has survived and, in the following months, had to undergo about 26 surgeries. Unfortunately, his face was marked by the war for the rest of his life. End of the Winter War The Winter War ended just a week after Heha was wounded in combat. Although Finland lost about 26,000 men, the Red Army casualties were 126,000. A Soviet general stated that the territory gained was just enough to bury their fallen. 
it is said that the poor strategic and combat level of Stalin's forces convinced Hitler to launch an invasion of the Soviet Union, a decision that proved fatal for the Third Reich. Later life and legacy. After recovering from his wounds, Heho received all kinds of awards and decorations from his nation. Although his home was now in Soviet territory, the Finnish government offered him a new farm in another municipality. There, he has spent the rest of his life hunting moose and raising dogs until his death in 2002 at the age of 97. In the few interviews he gave, when asked what made him such a lethal sniper, he always gave the same answer, practice. In 2017, the memoirs of the Finnish hero were discovered, where he spoke of his victims with remorse, not pride. That's all for now. Subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos. Without further ado, I wish you an excellent day.